what causes blisters? In a word, friction. Friction blisters occur when the cutaneous stratum skin layers shear from the lower dermal layers. Friction. If I take this sock here and this piece of fabric and I lay them together to illustrate what your skin layers look like at the top, and we applied friction to one spot, constant friction, the body would react by protecting itself from the damage by separating the skin layers and filling it with a bubble of fluid called serum. Now that bubble of fluid now protects both damaged skin layers from touching each other and creating more friction. So for those of you of the school that I want to pop my blister, well what you're doing then is you're allowing the skin to touch itself again and create more friction and damage it more. In addition to that, of course you know what happens next. The friction becomes so great that it breaks off that skin altogether at the top and now you've got the lower part exposed, creating more damage and of course now allowing infection to get in if you're not treating it constantly. So granted, if you already broken it, now you're in a position of now got to maintain it constantly to keep it clean and not let any infection get in. But what we want to think about here is prevention. Now, every skater has their own nuance in skating or their own problem. Some of us have boots that are just don't like us. Some of us have bad form. Um, sometimes you just haven't skated in a while and now because you haven't skated in a while the skin's not ready for a long distance skate and that friction takes place and you can get a blister. What takes place first is you get a hot spot. Now if you're a skater that knows where your hot spots are, the, the places that your body tends to get blisters, now you have an advantage because now you're in a better position to protect yourself in the future. For me, I get a hot spot on my inside heel. And you can actually see where that callus is built up, where there's a piece of dead skin here, where over time, I'm no longer going to get a blister there. But if it's the beginning of the skate season, or if I've just taken a long time off, and I accidentally go out on a marathon skate of 17 miles or more, I may be in a position where I might get a blister. So I'm going to want to protect myself. Um, before I get to that, let me share with you that for some of us, if you've got a skate like a speed skate, which, which, which is heat moldable, moldable, I could go back and put this in the oven and dimple this in or dimple it out where I've got that hot spot to try to protect myself from friction. However, many of you are using typical rec skates and you're still getting blisters. And even with this soft boot, perhaps the exoskeleton on the outside is going to then still create some friction through the boot to some sort of some location on your skin where it's just not going to be friendly and you're going to get the blister. What you want to do then is you want to try to protect yourself in various ways. You can first make a good choice in sock. Uh, my favorite sock is the wool sock. Nice thick layer, or at least thick enough that there's moisture trapped between this and your skin and the boot. So now you've got a nice layer between the skin and the boot to separate um, or to, to inhibit friction. But in, it also stops the moisture from collecting. Moisture is also going to be your enemy. A lot of skaters out there will skate barefooted simply to minimize friction, but they'll be prone to moisture in their boot and they'll end up with a potential blister simply because the friction is direct from the boot to the skin. And they're going to go with something like a body glide or just spray it, put some sort of coating on it, or maybe even tape it uh, with an with a, with a athletic tape where it's a real thin layer. The athletic tape is a good solution simply because it's porous. It's going to let the moisture flow back and forth and keep you dry or let the, uh, the, the air get back and forth and, and, and the moisture won't take place as, as quickly. Because if you tape your foot, and I, and I encourage people to actually tape all the way around as opposed to just a spot before a skate, what will happen is, is the moisture will still take place at some point and shifting can take place. And you don't want to go with like a, an absolute waterproof tape because it's waterproof on the outside, not on the underside. The, the, the moisture is going to take place between the tape and the skin and when that moisture takes place the, the, the tape shifts and moves and it's no longer useful. So if you are going to tape, don't tape a spot. Put full coverage. Tape all the way around the foot, all the way around the ankle so that no, no shifting can take place. Getting back to the socks, I chased a rabbit here. My other sock that I enjoy on my shorter skates is going to be my Kevlar sock simply because they got the yellow parts of the Kevlar keeps the cost down by not making the whole sock out of Kevlar, just the parts that you know take wear. But it's a nice thin sock, and it's going to then give me 
uh, such a tight coverage on my foot that there's no shifting. My favorite sock as of late is the Sole, S-O-L-E, a friend of mine from Skate Now, uh, theskatenowshop.com, her name is Kim, sent me these to use and I'm loving them, I'm going to buy a few more pair. Uh, they're cut to fit, left and right stitched right on them, but equally important, they're made out of the same material as compression shorts, so it's a really durable material that really hugs the skin, no shifting taking place. And without that shifting taking place, now the friction takes place between the sock and the boot and the skin and the sock not between the boot and the skin. If you go the moleskin route, I've already said this, full coverage, just lay the whole thing on the, on the hot spot. Wherever that hot spot is, put it right in the middle and cover it all. If you go with the donut shapes, this is after you've already started to get a hot spot. These are a real good solution after you've developed the hot spot on a skate and you're looking to, to stop the damage. Because what'll happen is, is let's say the hot spot is right here. You, the, the donut hole goes around the blister and now creates a higher layer so that the boot can't get down into that damaged area and create more friction. Again, key word here is friction. I've been going over this time and time again. Now, what are the other ways to minimize friction? Well, let's get right down to it. Form. If you've got bad form, you're creating friction in your boot. You don't want a toe flick. Well, let me put it this way. I'm not going to get into the full discussion about how to skate, but I'll, I will share with you this. You don't want a toe flick. You want to push off your heel. When you're skating, you drive off your heel. You don't flick the front of your boot, okay? So the torque that you're creating is driving off the heel, not flicking out your toe. So if you're one of those skaters who is pushing off with your toes, that is bad form. And you can fix that by starting to skate and by driving off your heel. Skating is a one-legged sport, whether you know it or not, and we're all just falling left to right off of our heels, driving through our hips. I encourage you to go join a speed skating team Maybe not to compete, but just join them for a few weeks or a month or two, and you'll learn extremely good form. Just from that level alone, joining a speed skating team will help you. Uh, a lot of the skate clubs will be able to direct you to speed skating teams if you don't know where there is one in your neighborhood. The other thing that can cause friction is simply your choice in manufacturer of boots. Whereas one person may love a K2, another person may hate it. Why? Because not all of our feet are the same. K2 used to make a wider, um, boot in the ball. Now it seems to be lower in the arch and narrower in the boot. Uh, not the best design in my, in my opinion anymore. Uh, still like the brand, but they're a better fit for somebody with a narrow foot and a low arch. If you've got high arches, uh, K2 boots usually compress on that arch and create some arch pain. Uh, in, the, in, in the same regard, uh, it is a soft boot, so for the most part, you don't get any blisters going on in a soft boot. So K2 makes a lot of soft boots that a lot of people will love. This is a long distance marathon speed skate. Uh, I no longer skate in this simply because it, it was a more narrow cut. I've moved on to the Kato Modus simply because if you look at the front here, look how wide that, that ball is. And with the laces here, I can, I can make my arch as high as I want. So the factors are this, distance of the skate, brand of skate, form. These things lend to bad, bad friction, friction occurring where you don't want it. So hopefully I've helped you. If you do like my videos, please give me a thumbs up on YouTube. Uh, it's real important to me. And it's important because they, they go up in the searches for other people looking for this type of content. In the meantime, I have other videos. I hope you look at them. You have a great day. It's too much for any man!